Hey fellow workers, my name is Kim Siever. Welcome back to my channel. We often hear the term low skilled workers tossed around almost dismissively, but what does it really mean? And more importantly, is there any truth to it? Often it's used to describe jobs that require minimal formal education or training, such as janitors, burger flippers, or farm hands. These jobs are crucial to the functioning of our society, yet they are often undervalued and overlooked. But here's the thing, just because a job doesn't require a post-secondary degree or a trade certificate doesn't mean it doesn't require skill. Every job demands a unique set of abilities and expertise. Take for example, the work of a janitor. Sure, cleaning toilets and mopping floors might not sound glamorous, but it requires a keen eye for detail, time management skills, and the ability to work efficiently. Plus, a good janitor knows which cleaning products to use for different services and for each task how to handle hazardous materials safely, how to prioritize tasks to ensure that every area is spotless, and how to maximize productivity. These are skills that not everyone possesses, and as such, they must be learned. They're also essential for maintaining a clean and hygienic environment for everyone. Same goes for the fast food worker. While some may view deep frying nuggets or taking orders as menial tasks, these jobs require excellent communication skills, the ability to work under pressure, and a strong attention to detail. A skilled fast food worker can multitask effectively, handle customer inquiries and complaints with professionalism, minimize waste, and ensure that orders are prepared accurately and efficiently. These skills are invaluable for the fast-paced and often chaotic environment of a busy restaurant. Finally, let's consider farm workers who work tirelessly to cultivate and harvest the food that sustains us all. Tending to crops and livestock, operating machinery, and navigating ever-changing weather conditions require a unique combination of physical strength, problem-solving abilities, and resilience. Without the dedication and expertise of these workers, our food supply chain would grind to a halt, leaving us all hungry and vulnerable. So why then do we continue to refer to these and other jobs as low-skilled? One reason may be societal biases that equate education level with intelligence and value. In reality, intelligence and skill are not synonymous, and it's time we recognize the inherent worth and dignity of all workers, regardless of their job title or level of formal education. Another factor contributing to the devaluation of so-called low-skilled workers is the issue of pay and compensation. Many of these jobs are notoriously low-paying, leading some to erroneously conclude that the work itself is somehow less valuable or important. However, the truth is that these jobs are often low-paying, not because they require less skill or effort, but because of systemic inequalities and power imbalances within our economic system. Furthermore, the COVID-19 pandemic has laid bare the essential nature of many jobs that were previously marginalized or overlooked. Grocery store clerks, delivery drivers, and healthcare workers often deemed low-skilled emerged as frontline heroes, risking their own health and safety to ensure that society continued to function. Their bravery and dedication reminds us that every worker, regardless of their job title or level of education, plays a vital role in our collective well-being. One common response I see from people when I mention that there's no such thing as low-skilled workers so we should stop exploiting them is that these workers should just get a different job if they don't want to be exploited. But that doesn't really change the exploitation. If a fast food worker is being overworked and underpaid but leaves to go somewhere else, while it might change that worker being overworked and underpaid, it won't change that workplace overworking and underpaying its workers. The problem is with the system, not the individual worker. So what can we do to challenge the myth of low-skilled labor and uplift the dignity of all workers? First, we must recognize and celebrate the skills and contributions of every worker, from janitors and burger flippers to nurses and welders. We must advocate for fair wages, safe working conditions, and equal opportunities for advancement for all workers, regardless of the nature of their work. Additionally, we must challenge our own biases and assumptions about the value of different types of work. Instead of perpetuating the myth of low-skilled workers, let's re frame the conversation to focus on the inherent worth and dignity of all individuals, regardless of their occupation. It's time we recognize and honor the contributions of all workers and work towards building a society that values and respects the dignity of every individual, regardless of the nature of their work. Solidarity.